So uh, first thing we're, I'm gonna show you the painting. This is called Mountain Sunset. And uh, this is what we're gonna be doing. The paints that I'm using today, and mine have spread out all over because I put them there an hour ago almost. Uh, so they've spread out. Yours might not have spread out this much. I have blue, black, yellow, red, and white. That's all I use. They're just primary colors plus black and white. That's all I use. And I'm gonna use a 16 by 20 canvas. You probably have a smaller canvas, like a 12 by 16, um, but I use a bigger one so I can show you everything and you can see it well. And then you should also have a jar of water or a cup of water, any, any container will do. And then you should also have a variety of brush sizes. I'm gonna be using a large, a medium, a small, and then a teeny tiny detail brush. If you don't have all of those, you can really do without the detail brush um, because the small will also work. So as long as you have a variety of brushes, we're gonna make that work. All right. You also need napkins. I'm wearing an apron. Uh, acrylic paints do, they are permanent. They will stain whatever you have. So make sure that um, you're not wearing your favorite shirt that you have to wear in a wedding this weekend, okay? Uh, just be prepared. And then it, if you get paint on it, um, <laughs> I don't know, acrylic paint's permanent, but you can always rub a little Dawn dish soap into it and then wash it right away in hot water and say a prayer. And sometimes that works. All right, so woohoo, we're gonna have fun. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my big brush. And since Denver is such a dry climate, I'm gonna cover my canvas with water. Just back and forth, just plain old water, that's it. And I'm doing this because it's very dry here. If you were in Mississippi or Indonesia or some, you know, uh, Florida in May, someplace it's very humid, you would not have to do this. But in Denver, pretty much always have to. The acrylic paints dry so quickly and a little bit of moisture on your canvas will really help keep things smooth. And acrylic paints dry very quickly, five to 10 minutes generally in Denver. And uh, your painting will be dry when you're finished with it. So you'll be able to hang it up. Um, you can take down, you know, your, your wedding picture and your diploma and your kids' pictures and replace it with your masterpiece. I'm sure you'll wanna do that today. Um, <laughs> uh, so anyway, it'll be dry. Seriously, it'll be dry. Okay. So I'm gonna just give you a second to do that. All right. So I, I always make sure that I clean my brushes in between each step um, because if they do dry quickly and so if I keep them in the water or you know, clean really well in between and then knock off the drips, dab it on my napkin to be sure it's clean, then my brush is always good to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do paint-wise, I'm gonna pick up yellow paint on both sides of my brush. And I'm not gonna scoop it like ice cream. It's not a big scoop. It's just yellow on both sides on the bristles. And we're gonna cover this top portion of our painting, I would say, let's go halfway down with some yellow. Just a beautiful shade of yellow, a happy warm shade on this cold wintry day. And boy, it felt like summer the other day. And then today, boom, winter. It was like, Huge, huge weather change. You'll notice that I'm keeping this streaky. I don't really care to make it perfect. Perfection is the enemy of art. We don't have to be perfect about anything we do tonight. Just relax, enjoy. One other thing that I forgot to mention, our business here is called Sipping and Painting. So we usually have a glass of wine. I might pick one up, but I've got a beverage. There's a few things, research shows that there's a few things that really help you tap into your creative mind. And, and this is for real. Um, staying hydrated, 
alcohol can help, movement can help, and listening to music. I don't turn on our music here when I'm doing a virtual class, we do in the studio, but um, there's copyright laws about recording other people's recordings, so I can't do that. Um, but if you wanna put on your music at home, feel free, just relax, enjoy, enjoy our evening together. I'm gonna go into my red, and I'm gonna pick up red on both sides of my big brush. Hopefully you cleaned your brush in between. If not, it really isn't gonna matter a whole lot because we're gonna be putting some orange on here soon, so it won't matter a whole lot. I'm gonna put, make the top of my painting fairly solid in red because I want that to be darker. But then as I go down, I'm gonna just make these lovely streaks of red on top of my yellow. But I'm not gonna make the whole sky that way. I don't want the whole sky to be that way. I mean, I don't want the whole um, sky to be red is what I'm trying to say. I want it to just kind of taper and become more yellow as it goes down. At this point, I have some lovely sunsetty streaks in my painting, and I'm not gonna pick up any more red. I'm just going to clean my brush, and I swish it a lot, as Bob Ross would say, beat the dickens out of it. Tap it on my napkin, make sure it's clean. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of water, even if it's, you know, your water has a little color in it, doesn't matter. And I'm just going to just use a single drop of water because I knocked, knocked most of it off. I don't want any drips. And just smooth out what I already have so that it blends. Where the yellow and the orange are still a tiny bit wet, they blend, pardon me, yellow and red, uh, where they meet, and they're both a little wet, it blends and makes this beautiful orange. The key though, don't use too much water, you'll have drips. If you have drips, just quickly go over it and pick it up. You can always let this dry and paint over it. No problem. I like to paint the sides of my canvas as well. And the reason for that is that that way you don't have to put it in a frame. This is called a gallery wrap when you paint on the sides and the top, and then it will look nice and finished from all the different sides, and you won't, you'll save money on a frame. So, and it also looks pretty modern too. I heard Bill say he let us, he's gonna hang his in the Clifford Still Museum, and that's a pretty modern place. So yeah, you're, you're gonna wanna have it look modern, Bill. All right, so I've got these lovely streaks of red and yellow overlapping, making this beautiful orange. And we had sunsets like this in Denver all summer, unfortunately, because of the pollution. But they were lovely. Don't over blend, okay? We don't want it to all be just one color orange. We want these vibrant streaks. See that vibrant streak of red? That's what we want. Don't overblend. Friends don't let friends overblend, okay? I wanna see yellow streaks. I wanna see red streaks and I wanna see orange streaks. That's how I get my beginning of my Bronco sunset. And then if I want to smooth it, I just pick up a single drop of water on my brush, tap off any excess, but just a little, just to moisten it a bit. And then I can smooth anything out that looks rough. And when I say rough, it means, what I mean is there's, sometimes you can see those canvas strokes, canvas marks through it. So if I just use a single drop of water and go over it, sometimes that just makes it look a little bit smoother. So I'm gonna let you work on the top half of your canvas, your sunset. Make sure it gets lighter here, more yellow, okay? I just wanna show you in a moment, we're gonna be 
And don't worry, I'm still giving you time, but in a moment, we're gonna be putting on a sun and lightening up the bottom a bit. Um, if you want to, you can take a lid from something at your house or the bottom of a cup and you can make use it as a little template for your sun. I'm gonna show you how to make a circle without a template. So you don't really need that, but if, if it's already starting to make you concerned, feel free. I did want to address somebody, I heard somebody say that they have more red in their sky than they wanted. That's, that's easily fixable. Everything is fixable. The great thing about acrylic paint is that it dries really fast. And so you can always paint over it. And so what I can do with a clean brush, a smaller one, I can mix a little bit of white in with my yellow. This is if you have too much red in, okay? Don't do this if, if you like where, where you're at. But if you have too much yellow, pardon me, too much red, and you wanna make it lighter, I'll just show you, mix a little bit of white together with a little yellow, and then you can put it over dry paint, whatever else you have that's dry. Because that white is pretty opaque, meaning that it, it sticks well to the canvas, it's, it's solid and it will cover up earlier mistakes pretty well. So if you have anything that's too red, mix a little bit of white with a little bit of yellow and put it over your mistakes that are dry and you'll be able to fix it right up. So not to worry. And anytime you have a mistake, don't worry, be happy. Just let it dry, put white paint over it, let that dry and you can use it Kind of like if you're old like me, you'll remember the stuff called correction fluid. We use it constantly for typing. We use it now for letters. And, it, and the white paint works like correction fluid. So no worries. Hakuna Matata. All right, since you have a smaller canvas, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make a circle without using a template. And we're just gonna put in this, this uh, setting sun right here, over here. So I'm gonna take a smaller brush. It could either be a small, small, or it could be a medium. You decide. The smaller it is, the longer it'll take to paint, but you'll have more control. So find a brush that works. Here's my medium. So to make a circle, I'm gonna touch it in the center of where I want it to be. Okay, and I'm gonna come down, bring my hand down close like a pencil, and then very slowly, hopefully you haven't had too much wine yet, very slowly just circle out. And that'll give you a nice little circle, but do it slow. And then you can let it dry. And then after you let it dry, you can go over it with another coat to make it whiter. But do let it dry because if you paint wet paint on top of wet paint, sometimes you pick it up rather than put it down. So I'll wait a few minutes before I uh, go over that with a second coat. Just for kicks, if you want to, you can take your tiniest brush and you can make in and put it in white and you can make little rings around it too. Maybe not perfect circles, but just to show kind of this reflective aura, I guess, I'm not sure what it's called, around the setting sun. Sometimes you see those around of light, around a lamp post. So if you want that look, if you like that look, you can do that. They're not perfect circles, they're not like Saturn rings, but they're just some little rings to just emphasize the sun a bit. I'm excited, so far we have this pretty, pretty sunset and we have a nice setting sun. Uh, 
I'm going to lighten this area up a bit. So I'm gonna streak on some white below my sun. That's going to add some, uh, add some lightness down below where my mountains are gonna be. So it's not, I'm not fighting quite as much with that color when I put on my purple. So I'm gonna streak in a little, some little thin white clouds down here. Maybe, maybe stick one or two up a little higher just to make it blend in. Just making this bottom area a little bit lighter. A little more natural looking too, to have it lighter underneath. And I picked up a drop of water just to make it smooth and help it blend a bit. But again, friends don't let friends over blend. Don't over blend it. You don't want it all one color. You want the streaks. And a drop of water on your brush really makes it nice. So nice and smooth. I can always come back later and I can put more white on this sun if I want. I don't have to worry about it now. If I come back in 20 minutes, it'll be totally dry and won't fight me at all. So I'm just not gonna worry about it. I was using my small brush to put on those white streaks at the bottom, but any brush, if you have a flat brush, any flat brush you can use for detail work if you hold it sideways. There's the blunt way that makes big strokes, but if you hold it sideways, you get little strokes. See, blunt strokes and then little strokes. So, just depending on how, how you hold a flat brush, that determines what you leave behind. So if I pick up my big brush, instead of going for my little one, I can make the same, same thin strokes if I want. Just have to know how to hold it. I'm gonna make sure all my brushes are clean. While you're finishing up your sunset, I just want to tell you a quick little story. So I'm Bob Roth certified. There's a few of us in Colorado who are. And what that means is uh, I went down to the Bob Roth School in Florida. Uh, he has a strip mall, or he had, he died in 1995, but he has a strip mall uh, studio, very similar to what I have here on Hamden 925. And his is in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. And that's where he painted um, when he was alive. He was born and raised in, um, in uh, Daytona Beach and had a, a studio outside in New Smyrna Beach. Anyway, this is not a Bob Ross class, but I wanna tell you a little quick thing about Bob. So uh, you feel good about your painting. When Bob painted, he would paint three different paintings and he would paint one for his producer and say, oh, this is what I wanna paint on the show. It's from a postcard or a photo or whatever I have. And the producer would say, fine. And then he'd come in a little early that day. He'd paint a second copy. It would look a little different than the first. And then on the show, he would paint a third copy. And so um, going down to that studio in New Smyrna Beach, Florida, uh, it's kind of fun because sometimes you get to see all three of the paintings that he would have on a, sh you know, that he prepared for his show. And you would, you could see that each one is a little different. And so sometimes when he was painting, he would look at the inspiration and say, you know, this bird needs a friend just like him. Uh, and he would throw on a, another bird or another tree. And so each one was different. The moral of my story is this. Your painting is going to look different than mine. Mine already looks different than the original. And each one of you is going to paint your and your personality is going to come out. So embrace that. 
that's what we want here today. We want to see your personality come out in your painting and celebrate that because no one in the world paints exactly like you. And to me, that is the most exciting part of painting to see your personality come out in your painting. All right. So um, if you are not ready and you need more time, um, uh, just listen up. I'm gonna tell you how to do the next step, but don't panic, okay? At any point, you can always go back, you can always catch up, and then I'll give you extra time at the end, so don't panic, okay? I'm gonna take a flat brush. When I say a flat brush, I mean that it's crimped, that metal is crimped, so part of it looks flat, see that? The other side's the broad side, and that's flat, so that's called a flat brush. I'm gonna pick, put white on a flat brush, and I am going to use it you can also use a tiny round brush. Either one is fine. That's okay, either one, see? I'm gonna use it to draw on my mountain peaks. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna start with my biggest one. This is your bravery test, folks. Here's my big one, woohoo. All right, that's my big one. And I'm gonna have a little peak next to it. If it drips, no problem, I have a little, one next to it, then I'm gonna have another one next to it. And then there, I'm, I wanna make each one a different height and a different shape and a different size than the one next to it, okay? Because I don't want it to look like Charlie Brown's shirt. I don't want any of this to look like teepees, okay? Another great tip is to wiggle your brush when you're making your line because real mountains would have a wiggly, messy um, profile. All right, so we're gonna be, all this is gonna get lost. We're gonna fill in below that line with white. Now, the reason I used white to draw that initial line is because if you don't like what you have, let it dry, put more sky over it and you can drop down lower, or you can make it smaller. But it's easiest to do if you start with a small, thin line at first, and then you can always change that. That's why I'm using white. So I'm just gonna fill in below that mountain. You're probably wondering, why did we make all that pretty sunset down there? I don't know, just for fun. Anyway, we're gonna cover that up a bit with some white. You can see that my yellow is bleeding through a bit, and that's okay. That's okay. I just want something a little lighter to put my mountains on so that it doesn't fight the purple too much. So if it's a little yellow, that's okay. That's all right. But that's gonna be the profile of my mountains. You make yours the way you want. Here's the thing, don't make them, don't make so many that they're just really skinny like spikes. You don't want, uh, most mountains have more gradual slopes, not spikes. So just be careful. You can always combine two of them into one if it looks too spiky. You'll notice up close, see, mine didn't cover the yellow, that's fine. But it did cut across the bottom of my sun. So it looks like the sun is setting behind the mountain and that's what I want. Take your time. Like I said, if you don't like what you did, since it was in white, you can always paint Paint your background, your sunset over it again, no problem. No one will ever know. No one will ever know. No one's ever gonna see the original. They're gonna see yours. They're gonna think you are a genius. Cheers to our artists.
while you're doing your mountains, if you have any extra paper plates at home, it might be nice to have an extra one just to mix colors with. We're gonna be mixing three shades of purple. So if you have an extra paper plate at home, um, that'd be great. If not, you can just use whatever space you have on the one you're using, no problem. Notice how we're painting from the background to the foreground. And that's really common in acrylic painting. And uh, the beauty of acrylic painting, the reason why I love acrylic is that you can layer paint because it dries. With an oil painting, it would be difficult, more difficult to do that. Um, yeah. Definitely could not do that with watercolor. But each layer is just going to sit right on top of another. While you're painting your mountains, I wanted to show you what we've been up to here. Um, we also paint ornaments. We have ornament classes. So if you work at a place where people are stuck at home and you want another different kind of class, uh, we do paint these ornaments. Aren't they pretty? Uh, we actually pour the paint inside and slosh them around and then let them dry and they create these really cool shapes. So that's kind of fun. And we have, we sell kits where you can do that at home too. Then we also paint on masks. So there's no end to the fun stuff you can do it with paint when you're stuck at home. And we have a YouTube channel where I painted about 60 classes online. I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch more of those in the weeks to come. And then people are just picking, we sell these white three ply cotton masks here for five bucks each. Um, or we also sell things in a kit. Um, but people are painting these paintings on masks. And then when you, they're stiff at first, but when you wash them, they soften up. And uh, we're having loads of fun here. If it stays still, we paint it. And we'll teach it. Okay, so I am hoping that you have your mountains on there and that you've put white underneath. And if not, don't worry, don't panic. I won't go too fast. You'll be able to catch up. But I'm gonna show you how to mix the, the purple, okay? We have three shades of purple. We have a very light purple. We have a medium purple and we have a dark purple like an eggplant. And then at the very bottom, we have black. And I came up with those colors one day when I was looking at a photograph of the mountains. And um, when things are farther away, they look bluer and lighter. When things are closer, they get warmer and darker. So these are different, four different um, ranges of in the mountains. That's what we're going for. So you may recall from when you were a little kid that the way you make purple is you add a little bit of blue and a little bit of red and swirl it together and what you should get is purple. And I have a nice deep rich purple there, but that's way too dark for what for my mountain. So in order to get purple, I'm gonna to have to wipe off that brush. I'm gonna go into the side of my paint and I'm gonna pick up some, just on the side of my white pile, not, not in the center, I wanna keep it fresh. I'm gonna pick up a big scoop of white and I'm gonna mix it in. And that'll give me a more lavender color. If you have more red, it's gonna be a different shade than if you have more blue. but it'll all be pretty. Maybe I'll stick a little more blue in there. 
personal preference, but, but we wanna keep it light. This, this first layer has quite a bit of white in it because it's very far away. Very far away, so it's lighter. And the mountains are taller back there. These are the 14ers way in the back. See, I made lavender. And then when you're ready, no hurry, we're gonna, we're gonna go over that white with our lavender. Ooh, that's pretty. Now, if I go start in the, the peak of it up here over the white, and then I come down, I can use my brush to mimic the slope by going some brush strokes this way and then some this way. Having a meet in the center, but having them, it's almost like you're skiing. So some this way and then some this way. And then have them meet in the center. Not neatly. Jagged is good. Jagged's better, in fact. To suggest a slope. Pretend you're skiing. Why not? And keep it bumpy. Don't make anything perfect. I like to wiggle when I paint, wiggle my brush. Keep it bumpy. We don't want it to look perfect like Disney World. Disney World is fun, but it looks really fake. We want this to look more realistic. So we're gonna keep it bumpy and wiggly. This, this little mountain's way in the back behind this one. So I'm gonna keep in mind my strokes. This one's in the front. So I'm gonna have that stroke come in front. I'm just kind of wiggling and pulling. It doesn't matter what the bottom looks like. It doesn't matter because I'm gonna paint another range in front of it. So don't be at all concerned with the base. We're only concerned with the top. So all we care about. See how if I alternate the slope It, it still looks rugged. I want those to look rugged, not all painted in the same direction. Wanted to have this look of texture to it. Nothing is perfect, nothing is perfect. This one's only half a mountain, so it's gonna have the same slope, slope all the way down because the other half is over here. All right, who wants to see a magic trick? Any kids want to see a magic trick? I know we have some kids painting. All right, so when you paint, you get to play God, which is kind of fun. You can't do that elsewhere in your life. So if you want to, you can push back any of these mountains behind another mountain. You wanna see how? All right, this, this is a powerful step. You get to be super powerful. Watch this, if I see all these are coming down in front of these, this mountain, that makes this one in front. Now, what if I said, Hey, big mountain, you went to the front of the line and that's not fair. Let's push, let's push him behind this one. Let, let, let this little guy come forward. Wanna see how, watch. You just put the strokes in the other way and suddenly that one gets pushed back in line a bit. Can you see that? Now this little one's in front. Taught that big one a lesson. Painting is fun. I just love painting. You get to you get to create your world. It's 
As long as the strokes go in this direction, it pushes that one behind. I'm gonna mix up a little more paint so you can see that more. Red and blue and white. A little more blue. All right, and make that one show up a little e more easy, more evenly so you can see it better. See how this little one now is in the front? Anyone who had a big brother, big sister knows what I'm talking about. Now that one's in front. You make your mountains the way you want them. The farther away they are, the lighter and the bluer they are. The closer things are, the darker and the warmer they are. What I mean by warmer is warm colors are red, Reds, yellows, browns. So I just want to keep, keep, uh, I don't want to get in this one's way. But you put whatever ones you want in front. Maybe they're all the same. You decide. Maybe that one's too full of himself now. Maybe we want them all to stand in a line. I'm gonna make this a little lighter. I had a little white. Now he looks a little farther away. Anyway, I like to play. As long as you get purple in there, it doesn't really matter. And I'm keeping the strokes going in the direction I would ski down if I were a skier there. You guys are fantastic. You are being a fantastic class. I'm very proud of you. You say that to all your classes. <laughs> Um, actually, there are some that I see their paintings and I go, interesting. <laughs> I guess we're supposed but, to be at ourselves. Almost. But you guys are good. All right. So the next one, it's just red and blue. I, I did mix it over my lighter color. So there's a little bit of white in it, but I didn't add any white. This one's just red and blue. Now, here's the thing. As we get lower, our mountains aren't going to be as steep. Okay. So they're not gonna be quite as pointy as the first ones, okay? And so I'm just gonna make, make them a little shorter than the originals. I can make this purple. You would mute, that'd be great. Go ahead and mute. Here's the tricky part. You wanna not make them exactly the same as the row behind, okay? So maybe this one is gonna start with half a mountain. Who knew, right? And then it's gonna come up, oh, it's gonna be wiggly. I don't want anything too, too perfect. And then it's gonna come up and then it's gonna, and I wanna be sure not to make Charlie Brown, right? So I don't want perfect triangles. This one's gonna come up and maybe right here, it's gonna be a little taller. I don't want Charlie Brown's shirt. Charlie Brown's shirt is like perfect triangles, like a chevron pattern. We don't want that. And then maybe this one, oh, it's just a wider one. Laying down sleeping. And what are we gonna do for that last one? I don't know, maybe skinny. Maybe that one's on a diet, been on a diet. Maybe it's a runner. 
Just make it different. Make your next row different, okay? Different than you had before. Same thing, try to put your strokes in the direction you would ski down. So if I were at the top of this mountain, on this side, I would ski down this way. If I were at the top on this side, I'd ski down this way, right? Top of this one, I'd ski this way. Top of this one, I'd ski this way. Top of this one, ooh, that'd be a fun slope. Ooh, it'd be a black diamond, a triple black diamond or whatever they're called. I don't know, I don't ski. It looks fun. I noticed that I had more blue in this one than in this one, but it's really up to you. If you want, you can add more blue and go right over the top. If you, if you said, oh, I want it more grape looking, you could do that. Let's just say you can't, it's your world, it's your painting. You, you make your mountain range the way you want. Notice I'm just using a big old glob of paint. I'm not shy with my paint. I don't have to be. I got plenty of paint. If you have less paint, use less. Feel free to unmute and visit. Remember, we have two more rows down here, so you don't have to fill it in, okay? It's okay if you have floating mountains. We're gonna, we're gonna put more down here later. Group got very quiet. I'm curious how many kids are painting with us. And I'd love to see their paintings. The thing I love so much about painting is you get to create your own world. Kids don't often get to be the boss, but when you're a painter, you are the boss, man. You boss around your painting all you want. You decide. You decide if you have make mountains or if you don't want mountains or you can grow a tree in just a minute. That's a fun part about painting. You make the world exactly the way you want it. Nobody can tell you differently when you paint. Well, they can tell you, but you don't have to listen. That's a great thing about painting. I've seen very shy kids. We used to have summer camp here and we will again some point um, after COVID, but I've seen very shy kids really blossom and adults too um, when they paint. And it's, 
It's so wonderful to see. We had a group in here one time, they were refugees and it was, they were all women, not, not kids, but they were women. And they had all experienced terrible, horrible, horrible things in their lives. And when they painted, sometimes they cried, but man, their paintings were so expressive and beautiful. And it was such a privilege to watch them tell their story through their paint. Gives me goosebumps. Now remember, as things get closer, they get warmer, meaning they have more yellow or red or brown, and they get darker. So this time I'm gonna add to that purple pile, uh, that purple mess I had before, I'm gonna add more red, more blue, but I'm gonna add a little more red this time. Why not? But then this time, here's the trick. The third color is not white. The third color is gonna be a tiny bit of black. Just a little, a pinto bean. You ever had a pinto bean at Qdoba? Add a pinto bean of black. If you add too much, you'll have to add more red and more blue. But what we're going for is a really dark purple. If you ever saw an eggplant before, it's like the color of an eggplant, almost. Dark purple. And for the old people like me, you'll remember there's a band called Deep Purple, I'm going for Deep Purple. My painting is still wet, that metal row is still wet. See that? But I don't really care. I, I can paint the next row over it and it, it'll be fine. So this time, this time I'm gonna drop down a little bit more, just above the bottom row here. And this time I can go woo, and just kind of be a little more free flowing with it because these are a little smaller. These are more like sledding hills. But remember, you have to have that deep purple color, okay? It's red plus blue plus a tiny bit of black. And each of, this color has to be darker than the color you had before or it won't show up. And this is, they're a little shorter, they're a little flatter. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the next step, but I don't expect anyone to be there. But I'll just tell you, because then we're just gonna let you guys unmute and visit even more. Get to know each other a bit, all your neighbors, right? At the, at the very end, after you get those three rows on, right? And it's okay that it's still wet, I don't, it doesn't matter. Then they're just soft, easy curves. These are the rolling hills, oops. I'm splattering, that's okay. And then these are just soft, easy little foothills. <whistles> See how easy and they're just little, little foothills. Boom, 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 they're just fun. They're like road bumps. If you ever drove on a country road, they're just those country road bumps. Cause these are the foothills, they're almost flat. They're just a- uh, Are they all black? And they're going to be just black with your medium, with a you know a medium brush. Whatever feels good. That's the bottom. It's just some foothills. This is where the people live. This is where nobody lives because you don't have any air. This is where the bears live. It's where the mountain lions live, and this is where the people live. And the resorts, they're up on, on this black part too. It's where you lose your money. Then I'm gonna paint the bottom. So that I can have that gallery wrap. Ooh, ah. So birds are a little hard. I'll just tell you that up front, okay? So let me tell you how to make the easiest birds first. And I would imagine that most people will probably say, let me, let me go with the easy ones. But depending on your confidence, 
and your painting ability and how much you've had to drink, we'll, we'll go from easiest to hardest, okay? So the easiest kind of bird is, oops, I'm taking a small brush, putting it in black paint, and then here, super easy. Start in the center. Always start in the center because wherever you touch, you're gonna have the most paint and then it's gonna get thinner as you go because you're depositing paint, right? So start in the center and then up and down and pull down. And kind of flick it as you go down. So it makes the end smooth. I mean, pointy. So I start in the center, go up, and then I flick, meaning less pressure as I at the tips. And that gives me the sharper ends. So that's a, an easy bird. Easy. And you can, with that easy bird, you can make his wings, you know, really folded, or you can make them flatter because depending on the, um, what am I trying to say? Depending on the cycle of his flying or her flying, they'll be flatter because they go up and down, right? So that's the easiest kind of bird. I like to thinking of, think of them as M's. So you just start in the middle, boop, go up and down, go up and down from the center, okay? That's the easiest kind of bird. Then we have another one that's a little bit harder, still not bad. This one you make it in the shape of candy corn. And for, this, you, for these birds, you need the smallest brush you have because it's hard to paint with anything bigger than your smallest brush you have. Okay, so candy corn in the middle. And then from the center middle, press down pretty hard because you want this to be the fattest part of the wing. Press down, then press lighter as you go and come out. So from the middle, so I have plenty of paint on my brush. From the middle, press hard and then press lighter as you go down. And that's kind of his head sticking up and his tushy and tail feathers down there, I guess. All right. Here's another one, okay? They're getting harder as we go. Then this one, you really make more of the profile of the bird. So you have a head, a little head with a pointy beak. I'm gonna make that bigger. Okay, here's his head. Here's his pointy beak. And I always recommend make your birds small because if they're bad, then no one will care. And we can always put a tree over this if we don't like it. And then the body is like half, half an almond shape, right? Then the tail kind of sticks out a little wider at the base. And then the wings are thicker than what you've been doing. So thick and then, oops, thick, and then come up more pointed. And then from the other side, same thing, but in a V. Hard, easier, easy. And even easiest, here's even easiest. Just a V, a handwriting V. That is easy, anyone can do that. But it takes the smallest brush you have. And you can see them all right in here in this painting. All right, now somebody asked me, how do you make a happy tree? And, uh, I love painting happy trees. Mary knows I love my job and nothing makes me happier than when somebody asks how to paint something. That just makes my heart, heart sore. 
So I'm gonna show you how to make a happy tree if you wanna make a tree. But first I'm gonna put a couple birds on my painting while you're finishing your birds. Uh, I think I'll put them over here so I can do a happy tree over there. When I paint birds, I like to paint them in pairs because I like to think they're on vacation in Florida or wherever. I guess there are no mountains in Florida. They're on vacation somewhere. They're little romantic birds. I think every, every bird needs a friend. Maybe they need two friends. Maybe they're having a party. Maybe it's a convention. Now, if you make birds that you hate, and that happens all the time, people do that all the time, just let it dry and then paint white over it. and then you can repaint your sunset on top of it later. So don't worry, be happy. Mine's a little convention. And these birds have been in quarantine a long time and there just came a vaccine and they're all like rushing out to get it and they're so happy to see each other in a minute, they're gonna start hugging. All right, I'm gonna show you how to do a tree for anyone who wants to, but. I would take a piece of paper and practice this before you put it on your painting, okay? So let me show you how to do a pine tree. Woohoo! All right, here's my brush. You don't have to do this, it's not part of the painting, but somebody asked. So I'm gonna make a great big old pine tree, ready? All right. Here we go. All right, camera, be still. All right, here we go. Flat brush, black paint on both sides. Here's my bravery test. Chugga, 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 chugga. I'm gonna tap down. I'm not stroking down. I'm not pulling it down, I'm tapping down. Why would I do that? Because pine trees have variegated trunks, meaning they're bumpy, okay? Okay, and then you can do this with a fan brush, but you guys probably don't have a fan brush, so uh, you can also do it with a flat brush. So to make the top branches, I wanna make sure that I don't have any big clumps on my brush. I'm just using the flat one. And at the top, I'm resting my pinky on, my clean pinky, hopefully, on part, just so I can be steady. At the top, you wanna drop down a little bit and you wanna have your branches tiny at the top because they're just, this is the top of the trunk. It doesn't have any branches on it. It's just a little baby tr trunk at that point. Here's, here's where it's bigger down here. So at the top, it's gonna to have these little baby branches. And I'm gonna tap, tap, tap with this flat brush and come down. Not a big slant, mostly flat. I don't wanna make it too perfectly or too perfectly uh, orderly. So maybe on one side, I'll have two in the place of one on the other. But notice how it's starting to go out at an angle because a pine tree is shaped like a pine cone resting on the open part. 
Now I wanna leave enough space in between each row of branches for birds to fly in and build a nest because these guys won't have a home if I don't leave any branches, any space in between. I wanna be able to see some of that sky. These guys are gonna come in and build a little nest up there. Maybe they already did, maybe there's a nest right there. Yeah, there is, right there. That's where he lives. All right, so I'm gonna make these a little bit larger as I go, but try not to make them too perfect. Perfection's really the enemy of art. Maybe there's a broken part here because a bear climbed it and the limb broke and he, he ended up going down here instead. So I'm gonna leave a little space there. Oh, that's where the bear fell. All right. So I'm gonna keep pressing harder as I go down, tapping a little bit more so that I get that triangular shape. This is a pretty tall, skinny tree. He's probably a, lot, a lodgepole pine. He's probably out in California, Yosemite maybe. I don't know if we have lodgepole pines here, but he's a pretty tall and thin, thin guy. I don't really know, maybe, maybe he lives in Colorado, we don't know. But he's starting to get taller as I build down. It's fun when you paint because you get to make things taller by adding more to the bottom. Nature doesn't do that. Nature makes it taller by growing up. But when you get to paint, you can make it taller by adding to the bottom. There's my happy tree. Now, if I want to make it a little fatter, maybe he was in quarantine for a long time like me and discovered granola bars and Netflix. I can make him a little fatter by just extending out the branches a bit. And then if your trunk is too obvious, so here's the thing, when you're painting a pine tree, you're painting the branches that go that way, you're painting the branches that go this way. The only way to paint the ones that are coming forward or the ones that are going back is to just tap over the trunk area a little bit more. And those are the ones that are coming toward us or the ones that are growing straight back by tapping over the trunk area. Just the trunk area, filling it in, making it a little more full over the trunk. And notice how I went all the way down, all the way down, right? It ends right in my black because that's a great big old, big old, great, look at that, great big old tree. All right. Any questions about the tree for the person or people who wanted to paint a tree? What color did you use? Thank you for asking. I used black. Now, um, I remember telling you before that <laughs> Bob Ross, I love that guy. He died in 1995, but I think he's hilarious. He always painted trees to frame his painting. So if he put a tall one here, he'd put one a little shorter right here and it would kind of frame the focal point. Or he might put a shorter one in here just for kicks and say, oh, this one needs a friend. Now, I tend to get carried away. I love making trees. I can make trees all day. Uh, so you can get carried away and cover all your beautiful mountains and maybe you don't want to do that. I, well, that's nice trees. Thanks. They're fun, man. I love painting trees. I love my job. I have the best job in the whole world. <laughs> when I go down to Florida and hang out at the Bob Ross studio, I get to hang out with Okay. I get to hang out with all these people who paint Bob Ross all day long. And um, Bob made a lot of jokes on his shows, and sometimes they would all be referring to their favorite Bob, Bob Ross lines. And because everyone already knew what they were going to say, they'd say, Oh, do you remember okay, episode great. 13 with the squirrel? So, which brush did you use? Thank you. I used a medium flat. Remember, flats are the ones that are wide on one side, and then you spin it a bit, and they're flatter. That's what I used. But you can also use a fan brush. Does anyone have a, do you guys have a fan brush in your kit? 
Yes. Okay, so fan brushes are the coolest thing that ever happened to artists. <laughs> so if you have a good relationship with Santa Claus, you need to ask for a fan. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't already have one, mm -hmm. uh, ask for a fan brush because they are the coolest brush of all the brushes, in my humble opinion. All right, here's how I'm going to make a tree with a fan brush. Oh, I love fan brushes. Okay, now you really got me going. <laughs> fan brushes are the bomb, man. Watch this. All right, I load my fan brush with paint on both sides. You're going to love this. All right. Hold on. Here's my fan brush. Woohoo, I'm excited. All right, little birdie, you're going behind my tree, man. All right. Pop, 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 right? No dragging. I want this bumpy. Nothing perfect in art. All right, I'm going to drop down a quarter inch and I'm going to. It's really nice trees. <laughs> Thanks. With my brush, I'm going to only paint the baby tree uh, branches with just the corner of my brush. Watch this. And I drop down a half an inch. The key to a nice pine tree is make a point at the top because all pine trees have a point. That's where the branches start. I can't tell you how many of my students start to, like they start their branches at the top and then it looks like a bush. So I always drop down. I like to drop down about a half an inch. All right, I'm gonna paint the tops with just the corner of this fan brush. All right, this is the exciting part. My branch has gone back and forth. I'm tapping, tapping, but notice I'm only using the corner for these babies. They're just little babies up in there. But then as, as I go, I'm going to spin my go, okay? And then I'm going to tap down like that. It's the same movement that I did with my flesh. Go ahead. We said it looks so pretty. Thanks. It's the same movement with my flat brush, same movement. It's just that the fan brush makes it so much easier. If you don't have a fan brush, put it on your Christmas list. Ask Santa Claus because it's the coolest. It's, it's, it is the bomb, man. All right, there we go. There's our little forest in the mountains. So we have before pine logging, sad. And this is when the trees grew back. Good first bird with like a duck. That's good. So trees or no trees, birds or no birds, doesn't matter. I do want to um, not keep you guys up too late. So I'm going to go ahead with the tiniest brush. I'm going to put it in whatever color. Doesn't really matter. Bob Ross used to sign his name with red, but again, this is not a Bob Ross painting. Bob Ross paintings are in oil. This is acrylic, but I like Bob, so I talk about Bob. I'm going to sign my painting down here in the bottom right hand corner. And I'm just going to put my initials. That's what I do. Okay, and, so do me a favor, sign your painting. So someday when I see it in the Clifford Still Museum yeah. or uh, Denver Art Museum, I'll know who you are and that you painted it with me. <coughs> He's going to do a live painting. Yay!